Alabama played their annual A-Day spring game this weekend, and the top recruits came out to witness it. We got Bama Online insider Tim Watts on this video today. We're going to go behind the scenes of the big weekend. Also, the transfer portal opens Tuesday. I want to know Bama's strategy for round two of this thing. All right, Bama fans, lock in. First of all, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruit channel. We're trying to get this thing to 50K. Need your help to get there. All right, let's bring on the great Tim Watts of Bama Online. Now, linebacker Jaden Harmon, he just committed this afternoon. Lots here, Brooks, the day before. Um, Harmon looks great, Six foot one, 205 pounds, kind of what Bama has been recruiting at the linebacker position. Brooks, man, he helped his team to a state title last year. 61 receptions, over 1,200 yards, 22 touchdowns. What should Alabama fans be excited about when it comes to these latest additions? Well, with Brooks, he's fast. He's not just a speed guy. I think that's which when you look at him, I and mean, he's been kind of low-key. He hasn't been to a lot of places. I think he ran a 10-8, uh, 100 when he was in eighth grade, just kind of retired, kind of like a Seinfeld episode, just hung him up and – you can see on tape how quick he is. I mean, he's, he's fast, he's quick, he's got the burst, he's got great feet. He has a knack for scoring touchdowns. I mean, just overall, everything you see about him, he's a touchdown machine. And he fits right into what they want to do. I mean, you want to have that guy that can come from the slot when you watch his film. He does a little bit of everything. Good hands from the slot, from the outside, bubble screens, all the little things that you uh, yeah. want to see in a wide receiver to have all that route tree to work with. Um, with Jarman, you know, the tight end, I mean, the uh, linebacker, I mean, what you see is what you get with him. He's a thumper. He's a heavy hitter. He's a guy that, find, you know, I like to call him find the ball, get the ball, sick him. He just <laughs> knows how to get to the ball uh, coming off that edge as a rusher. But also you see him drop into space. He's kind of like a, a, a guy that can fill in on a tight end. You find him in the slot, but he also just chases the ball sideline to sideline and a heavy hitter, very violent. Yeah, it, it, we've kind of seen Alabama pivot to this more smaller, athletic-type linebacker. Is this a trend that you're seeing, and this is what we expect to see moving forward? Yeah, I think that's kind of it throughout the nation. I mean, I think the you know True. the six foot four, two hundred thirty-five pound linebackers are kind of a thing of the past. Now, if you can get them, and they run in that four or five range, then you certainly get them. But a lot of those guys aren't able to do that at that size. Uh, these are guys that they want to be able to line up in different positions and move all over. I mean, they've got guys with size. They got Mets, who's in the 220 range. They've got Abdul Sanders, who's in the 225 range. So they've got guys that are bigger. But I think the main thing they're looking for is guys that can get to the ball, deliver a hit, and bring you down on impact. All right. I want to move on and talk about defensive lineman Josiah Sharma. He comes in from California, massive four star defensive lineman. But this has been his third visit to Alabama this year. <laughs> He was at a practice. He was at a junior day back in February. Now he's back again this month for the second time just this month. Uh, is Bama close to landing a commitment from Sharma? You know, I never want to say never. I know he wants to take visits and enjoy the process. I feel mm -hmm. like they've did a great job. That relationship's carried over from Courtney Morgan and Kalen DeBoer from when they were at Washington. He's obviously really happy at Alabama. As you said, he's been a multiple multiple visits uh, to the capstone. And you got a guy that's coming clear across the country to do that. One of my favorite guys in this class, because he's one of the first guys I heard linked to Alabama when the new Washington, when the old Washington staff arrived in Tuscaloosa, yeah. Sharma was one. Jackson Lloyd, who's another guy that's made frequent visits from California. Both of them are those dancing bear type guys on the offense and defensive line. I don't know if he's close to a commitment, but I do like where Alabama sits right now. Yeah, it just seems he committed a KO and DeBoer once while he was at Washington. Now DeBoer's at Alabama. It seems to me like a commitment could be imminent, but we'll have to hold off and just wait and see what happens there. All right. I wanted to talk transfer portal. Round two is going to start on Tuesday. And over the weekend, we spotted Caden Proctor at the Alabama spring game just hanging out on the sidelines like with the other recruits. That was kind of a weird scene there. But it does indeed look like he's going to be back at Alabama here soon. Uh, when it comes to the portal, does Alabama need another offensive lineman when it opens? And also, well, we'll get to that. What do you think that they need in the portal right now? Well, I think you always need offensive linemen, right? They're a little bit thin at tackle. Even with Proctor coming back, they're looking at about four on scholarship, I believe is the number. Um, you always want some depth on the offensive line. Um, just because of injuries, it's not hard to get your ankle rolled up on or your knee rolled up on uh, in those trenches. So that's one position I think they'll look for. I think the portal is going to be very similar to what Nick Saban did, though. It's going to be 
guys that can come in immediately and help. I know they feel good on the defensive line as far as that goes. But if a guy's just too good to pass up, I think that's what they're going to be looking for primarily. I think offensive line, maybe a wide receiver, you know, somebody like that, a tight end could be in play. But it's going to have to be the right one. All right. Now, on the flip side, rumors are swirling that cornerback Tony Mitchell could be leaving the program when the portal opens. Is there anybody else on your watch list that could hit the portal on Tuesday that's on Alabama's current roster? I mean, there's guys that you look at, you have to wonder. I know they're having, you know, you go through that spring, you kind of see where you're at. This is a two-way street. Do you yeah. like Alabama? Alabama like you. I mean, there's a lot of things that that uh, where you have to have some serious talks. I mean, Tony, I mean, Tony's Tony. If you caught, followed him in the recruiting process, I mean, there was reports out today that uh, earlier that said he was supposed to, you know, hit the portal. And then he turned around and said that was cap. It wasn't true. But, I mean, you never know with Tony. He took visits and told us he wasn't he wasn't on those visits when we know he was. So, Tony's an original <laughs> character, hard to predict. But I think there's guys that are – anybody that's not playing at this stage, once they're in that red shirt sophomore year and beyond, they're guys that you can look at. But I do think as far as huge names goes, I think mm -hmm. a lot of that you saw after Saban retired. I think you saw a lot of that – um, you know, with Caden Proctor, Caleb Downs, Isaiah Bond. I think you saw the majority of those guys. Um, but again, it's the portal. I mean, there's yeah. not really, not extremely predictable. No, it's not. And like you said, that we're still in the transition period and the roster could be shaping up. Hey, like you said, Kalen DeBoer could get, get some names that he wants out of there to open up more spots for others. But just in generally speaking, how active do you think they need to be in the portal? I mean, are we looking at, four or five editions or just one or two editions? I think you're looking at a handful or less. I mean, Nick Saban, I mean, he did a great job recruiting. It's not yeah. like, you know, even not many universities can lose Caden Proctor, even though he's expected to come back, Caleb Downs, Isaiah Bond, and not really, you know, obviously there's a dent in the talent, but there's still a very talented team. I mean, he replaced them with, you know, Jermaine, Jeremy Bernard replaced Isaiah Bond, who I think is going to be every bit as good as Isaiah was. And I think Isaiah is a really good player. They got Damani Jackson to come in. You know, they got a lot of guys to come in. Counting, if you count Proctor, and I don't know if you count him or not, they got the number one <laughs> offensive tackle from the portal, and they got the number one center from the portal and, uh, portal and Parker Brailsford. So they did a good job of finding holes, but I don't think there's any staff in the country any who's saying, hey, we're good. We don't need anybody out of the portal. There's always holes to fill. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a weird cycle when Alabama loses one of the most important players to go to the portal, but then they land him again. And so now I guess they landed one of the most important players to hit the portal. I don't know how that is yeah. supposed to work in 2024. But Tim Watts, thank you for stopping by the Inside Scoop, talking a little Bama recruiting with us today. You guys got it anytime. Thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed that, go check out the hundreds of videos that we have on this channel, and also do me a favor, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel.